What's up, guys? War here. Indrum's Lair with the sub to the channel. I appreciate that. Welcome back to another Diablo 4 video. Today, we're going to be talking about the Occultist. Okay, Damon. So, in the, the Occultist, you unlock him in the main part of the map, which is... I never get this one right. What is this place called? I forgot. COVID, Covia Shad or... I'm butchering that name. You guys can fact check me in the comments. So, you unlock the Occultist once you get some legendary items. You unlock the Occultist fairly early inside no, of Diablo 4. And there could be some things that can... Can be a little confusing when it comes to the Occultist. So, essentially, the Occultist is where you're able to have a lot of things that you can do. So, for example... Just like in Diablo 3, you can extract a legendary item. So that's what we're going to do with our Shadow Slice Bone Weave Gauntlets. So when you dash, when you cast dash, which we have because we're playing Rogue, is a Shadow Clone is spawned at my location and then also dashes, dealing more damage. So because my gloves are currently better, we're going to extract this. So just like in the cube from Diablo 3, you're able to do that and then you'll have the legendary aspect for it. We're going to spend 5k and extract it. Extracting this item's aspect will destroy the original item. Do you want to proceed? Yes. Boom. So now you can come over to your tab and click aspects. And now you have the legendary aspect. And it shows you your allowed item types. So one hand weapons, two hand weapons, powering is increased by uh, 100%. Gloves or amulet, the power is increased by 50%. And then you can put it on rings. So for example... We would want this to be on a two-handed weapon because the power is increased by 100%. So that would be the best one for it to be on, right? But you have the you have all those other options if you really want to. So now we have an aspect. Great. Now these, these can be applied to any of those. So now if we back up, right? We got the aspect. So now we could we could add it, right? We could add it to it. Right? We don't want to junk it, but now you could add it to this weapon. So I let's go back into the occultist. So, special. to imprint an aspect, we need to grab an item. We need to grab our aspect, which you can put an aspect from inventory or the codex of power. Now, the codex of powers, these are things that you can get from completing dungeons. See how it said aspect of encirculable or insert was it encircling blades? Flurry does damage in a circle around you and deals 8% increased damage. Unlocked by completing the Forsaken Quarry in Fractures, Fractured Peaks. All of these come from dungeons. Okay? You can get these from completing a dungeon, killing the boss, and then you get the aspect. Also, when you click on the aspect, for example, it shows... You can do My Class Only. And it'll show you allowed item types. So, Amulet, Weapon gloves or ring that this aspect can be applied to okay at first i got confused about it too but you can add this on okay so you can add that and add it to the power so now you get to see what your new bow would be so then it would make my bow legendary and it would change its stats or excuse me improve its stats because our current stats are still the same right the 34 dex the 16 percent base skill damage and then all of your 12% damage to distant enemies. And then it has the two gems. So now when you look at it, you still have the same two properties. Now you have the lucky hit, which is still there. But now it shows you your, your imprinted um, power that you have on there. Right? So, Or we could just get rid of this. Right? Just remove this. And then we could put this on here as well. You can't do both. At least at the same time. So you could add this here, and now I have dash, right? And remember, when this is on a two-handed weapon, our power is increased by 100%. Now, when it comes to your weapons here, you can apply these to legendary gauntlets if you really wanted to, right? So it just reprints the thing on there. But again, we want to have the power increased by 100%, so we would want to do it on a weapon. So now with this, it uses the... Uh, veiled crystals plus money to actually craft it on here which veiled crystals are very hard to get or at least it seems that way right now in Diablo 4 so be very weary about how often you use these I think once you get to the higher levels you're going to be able to get these 
So then you can extract the aspect, which we already done. The other thing that you can do is craft sigils. Now, a lot of people, especially in my chat on the videos that, you know, we've kind of been prepping for with Diablo 4 is crafting sigils. Sigils is the end game to Diablo 4. So what sigils do is they give a nightmare tier and the nightmare sigil is used to transform a dungeon, a current world dungeon to a nightmare dungeon. Okay. It adds afflictions to it and it requires a certain world world tier to do. So when you beat a world boss, which you can then it unlocks another world tier for you to play, which is your difficulty level. Now you can go up. Now you're going to get these, right? And how I compare these two was like the greater rifts from Diablo 3. So as you go up, you got tier 1 through 5, 6 through 10, etc., right? And then you have Ancestral, which still makes them, it's just world tier 4. Now they're even stronger. And you see these go up to world tier 100 or, or tier 100. So you need sigil powders to, to craft the sigils, which you gain later in the game. But making these is a big part of your end game because it makes dungeons harder, which in turn gives you better loot when you beat them. So this is a huge aspect of the end game in Diablo 4. So now you can also salvage sigils, right? You can salvage them, which also gives you your powder, your sigil powder. So I haven't found any. I don't think we're going to be able to find any, but that is how the sigils work for the end game. Okay, and then you have enchant item. So let's pull our boots over here. Now, you, a lot of people asked about replacing, right? In Diablo 3, you can re-roll an item. The same thing here, right? So add an item slot and select the affix to replace. So here's the things that are on here, right? So the max evade charge is always going to be on there. But the other three, the dash, caltrops, and movement speed is anything that you can replace. Uh, you can pick one of these, and you have the chance to re-roll it. So let's say Caltrops we're not doing. So let's enchant. We're going to spend one. So you will not be able to cancel the enchanting action once the occultist has selected your replacement affix in the next step. Enchanting it will also bind it to your account and then making this item untradeable. That's fine. So let's do it. So here's what you can replace it with. Lightning resistance, dodge chance, or you can select no change, which means you keep the current ability so again if you guys play diablo 3 this is similar to that me i'll take because i'm not using caltrops i'll take the dodge chance and you replace it boom now you can do this again right same thing as before cost veal crystals and money now here's the only thing that i have an issue with with the re-rolling system in diablo 4 right now i have no way to see what the possible chances are or possible outcomes that can be for re-rolling something that's something diablo 3 has but diablo 4 does not i cannot see what the options are for me re-rolling this so that's kind of a huge bummer when it comes to this so i'm sure there may be a table out there later that you can do and kind of look at to see but as far as in game i can't see what a possible affix is to replace or what would make it worth replacing. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this. Okay. So we have the sigils we went over. We got enchant item. We got craft sigils. And then we got extract legendary powers. And then we have imprint. So let's do an imprint. Okay. Let's do it. We have our, our bow here, which is cool. Let's add our dash. Okay. So now when I cast dash, a shadow clone is spawned, dealing 31% of base damage. But if we add it on a two-handed weapon, power is increased by 100%. So now you see the dash, and it goes up to 62%, which is awesome. So it doubles, which is huge. So we're going to spend four and imprint the aspect. Imprinting this item will override its existing power, which it does not have. And do we want to proceed? Yes. Boom. Now we have Shadow Slicer Serpent's Bone Bow which has increased damage and now we do 62% of our base damage when we dash. This is super cool. Now let's check real quick. Let's go to our codex. So if we do this, right, if you imprint, it's going to replace it. You see how flurries on there instead of our dash. So you can only have one 
either codex or aspect on a any given weapon at one time you can't have both see dash is on there so now we go down and we have flurry now so be very like picky and choosy about what you put on there i think the aspects is one of the best things about d4 and i think it's very it makes customizing your character and your builds very very unique so that's everything inside of the alchemist guys or the occultist excuse me and it's a very very big part of the game you're going to be right. using the occultist a lot to customize characters and whatnot so be very picky and choosy about what you use so if you guys did enjoy today's video make sure to drop a like sub if you're new comment down below what do you guys think about the occultist in diablo 4 and as always stay gaming and i'll catch you in the next one peace